Hi, and welcome to the Intentional Wealth Update from Morton Brown Family Wealth for the first week of March of 2022. I'm Dennis Morton here with Katie Brown and Cody Demmel. How are you guys doing? Okay. Very well, thank you. Good. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, geopolitical conflict. And I think if there's one thing we've learned from our conversations with clients over the last week, it's that really the humanitarian side of what's happening in the world right now really kind of overwhelms our feelings about what's happening financially sometimes. So we want to talk about this in, in context of, first of all, how do we manage our emotions through it? What does it mean for markets historically as we go through some of these turbulent times? And then also, you know, we can't predict what the catalysts are going to be sometimes, but we have to look at the responses, both from policymakers and our own. So um, we're going to talk about those things today. Cody, why don't you get us started to talk a little bit about just the impact. We have a Vanguard uh, slide that we can show on the impact of geopolitical events, their duration, and what happens to the markets. Yep. So this is a, a nice chart from Vanguard that they, they provided over some of the recent conflicts that we've seen over the past 50 years. And the initial downturn that you see in the orange, and then some of the bounce back, the lighter green slash blue is six months after the initial sell-off, and then a year later. As you can see, majority of the times, it's, it's been a positive bounce back from the initial volatility that we've seen when we have some of these geopolitical sell-offs. Right. And, and some of them are domestic, some are international, combinations of both. Um, some of them are familiar. You see the UK, Ukraine conflict. Katie, what do you take away from this chart? You know, what I take away from this is that reminder of regardless of what's happening in the world, you can't expect the markets to move in lockstep. The markets are always going to be factoring in way too many, way too many considerations, and and they're they're always forward looking, and and so what I pull away from this is be very cautious about having immediate reactions to what's happening in the world when it comes to your finances. Yeah, and I mean, really, if, if we're taking this to an absurd level, the right time to be optimistic is at the bottom. Like when the market hits the bottom, realistically, we should be thinking, okay, it's all up from here. But that's not how it feels. How, how does it feel at the bottom? Awful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awful, and you can't. You never know that it's the bottom. So there's there's that feeling of, oh my gosh, how much worse is it going to get? How much further are we going to go down? And and I think oftentimes, even when we do start to see some positive reactions to it, it's it's kind of easy to dismiss it by saying, yeah, but there's still so much going on that it's just still going to continue to get worse. And sometimes we don't recognize when things have turned a corner. Yeah, and, and it's sometimes we'll hear things uh, from people will say, can I just get out and get back in when things are better? Um, but the pandemic taught us, you know, in a really stark way, the bottom of the market was what, March 23rd, 24th of 2020. Nothing looked better at that point. And in reality, we've just been working through over the last two years, a pretty awful set of circumstances, but the market recovered and, you know, and you have to look back and say, at what point would I have gotten back in? If, if you do decide to get it, at what point were things, would they sound the all, all clear? And it could happen quickly. Cody, talk about what happened last week with just how sharply things turned right in the middle of, the, of this conflict developing. Yep. So this chart is from Thursday the 24th till around 3 p.m. today on Wednesday, the, the 2nd. So the initial sell-off that we, that we saw when the stock market opened on Thursday, after we got the news that Russia invaded, it was down around 3%. And obviously, unfortunately, the, the war and the invasion is still going on, but the market has rallied, at least the U.S. market has rallied from the bottoms that, that we saw on Thursday. So the small cap stocks are up around 6%. The NASDAQ stocks are off, up around 5%, and the S&P 500 is up around 4% from some of the lows that we saw on Thursday. Mm -hmm. now, who knows what the rationale behind short-term movements in the market, but in general, the market hates uncertainty. It doesn't like surprises. So when things happen in a surprising way, there's that initial shock, and then there's a digestion process. And it's, you can almost imagine these companies saying, okay, how are we still going to function? Or the economy saying, how are we still going to function in this new reality? And then you start to get the, the recovery and, and the bounce back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously a lot could change still ongoing. This is just a less than a week snapshot of what's happened since last Thursday. Hopefully the 
eventually the, the invasion will slow down or, or it'll stop, but this is obviously just a shorter term. And one thing to point out too, is the market was already off around eight to 10% before the invasion. So we were already off a decent amount year to date. So some of this could just be putting some, some money to work too. Yeah. I think the other thing to bear in mind too, is there's a lot of negative news when you turn on the television and, and there's a lot of highlighting the negative impact to the markets, the economy, but in reality, to your point, Cody and, and Dennis, we can, we can be experiencing some gains during that time, but it's very easy to just assume that things are going in a negative direction. I would just suggest taking a deep breath, reaching out, let's have a conversation. Let's, you know, help to build that context around it because it, it's not always as bad as you might think it is just from hearing and looking at the news flow. And Katie, you brought up a good point earlier. E even where we expect some of our safety to reside like on the bond side of our portfolio, how's that been working through the, these, this first week of this crisis? Yeah, you know, bonds are doing what we expect bonds to do. There's been a lot of conversation about rate hikes, and, and we may touch on that. And typically, when rates increase, then bond prices come down. And, and we felt that the beginning of the year before this invasion. However, the Fed only sets those short-term rates right at the very beginning. The market will dictate how the rates move otherwise. And the consumers have been driving down those rates at the longer end. And so bond prices have actually been going up. And that's what we typically look for. We look for those bonds to provide that stability during periods like this. And that's what we've been seeing. So even as there's conversations around rate hikes and, and so forth, when it comes to the volatility under you know times of crisis, the bonds are reacting appropriately. Yeah, yeah. and Cody, uh, policy response. You know, the Fed was expected to act. I mean, this is where we talk about, you can expect a lot of things, but, and everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. But what, what is the Fed left to do? What are they telling us now? Powell was in front of Congress today speaking. He said they're, they're still on path to do a 25 basis point hike in March to begin the process of, of hiking interest rates. And, and as Katie, Katie said, they can only do the shorter term, the longer terms impacted by what the market thinks is going to happen. And just a couple of weeks ago, the market thought a lot of the market participants thought that it was going to be a 50 basis point hike in, in March. So now when it's dropped to 25, that's where we've seen some of the prices of the bonds increase a little bit because they might not be hiking as fast as initially thought. Right. So, you know, the policymakers really have a challenge in front of them now because we have inflation that we were kind of getting used to these higher and higher numbers on the inflation side. But you know, the Fed needs ammo to it. They, they need to be able to move rates in response to crisis. And when they're at zero, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. So I think there's there's definitely appetite to move off of this base and get things moving. Um, just doesn't look like it's going to be as fast as maybe we thought. One last thought about staying the course and, and making sure that we're not making any rash decisions. Uh, Katie, I know you and I have talked about this uh, for a long time now. The decision to get out of the market really creates two decisions. It's when you get out and then when when you get back in, right? So do you have any, any wisdom for people who might be you know, feeling tempted to, to put money on the sidelines or, or reluctant to put money to work here? How, how, would, you, how would you encourage them to, to think about this period of time? Yeah, I would really remind them that volatility works both ways. It works to the downside and it works to the upside, especially during these choppy days. You can get a day where you're up 500, 700 points on the market, or you might be down 500, 700 points. It can go in either direction. And as we said, it's it's really, it does not move in lockstep, lockstep to what's happening in the world around us. So as long as you have a well-diversified portfolio, you have your plan in place and you're following your plan. Dennis, I know you provide a lot of great wisdom around that and process and making sure that you have your plan in place. That diversified portfolio and your plan, that should be driving any changes or decisions, not the assumption of what the world around us has and how that's going to impact what's going on in the markets. Great point. Great point. Well said. 
All right. Well, we we understand that there's a lot of confusion out there. The, you know, the things have been volatile. If you have specific questions about what's happening in the markets or your financial plan, feel free to reach out to us at any time. In the meantime, we hope all is well with you and your family, and we look forward to catching up with you again in our next update.